Thanks for joining us for a new edition of World Insight. I'm James Chow. We're here in Beijing. Coming up over the next half hour, we'll go back over the past seven days as we look at these stories in the headlines and analyze that with a Chinese perspective. So stay with us. Coming up, your insight on World Insight. Well, let's go straight into our first story. And for that, we're going to bring you to London. British Prime Minister Gordon Brown is in his darkest days. His political fortunes have spiraled downwards with a string of high-profile cabinet resignations. Also, a nasty internal split and the disastrous local and European elections. Many thought that he would step down, but the Prime Minister seems to be hanging on. Grey clouds gathered over Westminster. Was a political storm also brewing? Stay or go? That was the question for British Prime Minister Gordon Brown. His fate was bound to Monday's European elections, and the result was worse than he could have imagined. Labour was beaten to third place, trailing both the opposition Conservatives and the fringe UK Independence Party. It garnered less than 16 percent of the vote, the lowest share in a century. The defeat marked the low point of an era in British politics that began in 1997, when Brown ushered in a movement known as New Labour. People are tired of Labour's 12-year rule. Brown's New Labour aimed to be pro-business and pro-market, but a dozen years have passed, and many see it as the same old thing. The economy is declining, unemployment is rising. And people have begun to question Labour's ability. A big night for Conservatives, but a nightmare for Labour. It only added to Brown's woes. The recent flood of revelations detailing the embarrassing expenses claimed by MPs has dented his reputation. Brown is now the most unpopular prime minister in British history. Last week, a string of his ministers resigned. Work and pension secretary James Pennell publicly called for Brown to step aside in his resignation letter. The prime minister's leadership was in turmoil. I see there is some murmuring.、Uh, on he told us he had the right team to take the country forward. That team is now deserting him. The government is collapsing before our eyes. Why doesn't he take the one act of authority left to him? Get down to the palace, ask for a dissolution, call that election.、Yeah. Brown's moral authority was weakened with the disclosure that he'd overclaimed for bills for two second houses. Adding Labour's poor showing in local elections, all these pushed Brown to the edge. Some say he could just limp on like a wounded and exhausted elephant. For Gordon Brown, now it's hard to tell who's an ally and who's an enemy. Peter Mandelson was seen as Brown's firm ally. Uh, what the party needs to do now、uh, is to unite、uh, behind the prime minister.、Uh, he is by far the biggest figure in British politics to lead the country in the face of what are very difficult times. Brown rewarded him by elevating the business secretary to the first secretary of state. But just a day later, Mandelson was revealed to have called Brown insecure, self-conscious, and uncomfortable in a leaked email. And predecessor Tony Blair was also shown to have attacked Brown's leadership as lamentable and vacuous, and the ministers who resigned are said to be a Blairite faction. Some fear Blair and his supporters could use the withdrawal to undermine his successor, much as Margaret Thatcher did to John Major. So Brown reshuffled his cabinet and dug in even harder. I accept responsibility, but I'm not going to walk away from our duty to the country. I'm going to get on with the task. I have chosen a cabinet who are likewise committed to serving the nation first and foremost. They are people of character and strength, experience and resilience. 
A day after the European elections, Brown confronted dissidents at a closed-door meeting. Witnesses say he began the address amid some booing, but finished to cheers and applause. I know I need to improve. I have my strengths and I have my weaknesses. There are some things I can do well, some not so well. You solve the problem not by walking away, but by facing it and doing something about it. Brown's emotional speech helped him stave off this big challenge. Many labor members who opposed him before turned to support him. Foreign Secretary David Miliband, once seen as a potential challenger to Brown, said the Labour Party does not want a new leader. There is no vacancy. There is no challenger. Analysts say the party needs Brown for unity. Though some Labour lawmakers are dissatisfied with Brown's leadership, there's no alternative candidate coming forward, and many fear Brown's departure would precipitate an early election in which Labour would be crushed. The party can't take the bloodletting any longer. They have to put up and shut up. But it's still too early to celebrate. Brown's position is not safe yet. The top table of his new team looks familiar. Alistair Darling remains chancellor, though tainted by the expense scandal. Brown planned to remove him, but the chancellor refused other jobs. It fueled speculation about who's in charge. For now, Brown seems to have stabilized his government, but in politics, anything can happen. This is especially true in the run-up to the Labour Party's annual conference in September, if its poll ratings remain poor. What can Brown do to shore up his authority? Brown needs to inspire his party with more inclusive leadership. He has to clean up a parliament rocked by the expenses scandal. But his best chance of quelling dissent and beating the opposition conservatives rests on the economy. Britain's economy is largely dependent on its financial industry. Both have taken a beating in the global recession. The unemployed ranks have swelled to over two million, the most since Labour came to power in 1997. And as many other European countries begin to recover, there's no sign of turnaround in Britain. Brown was finance minister for ten years before taking over from Blair as prime minister in 2007, and he's been central to global action to deal with the economic crisis. He's banking on economic growth to vault labor back into voters' hearts, but fixing the economy is a long-term task. Whereas cleaning up politics would immediately signal a fresh start. Well, let's look ahead now. Gordon Brown could stay on until the next election in June 2010. He hopes to dodge the falling rocks and to stop his slide, but nothing is solid anymore. He'll have to watch his footing in the remaining months. Coming up next, we'll look for clues to Air France's deadliest plane crash.